Peace, human families of the planet Earth. You're now tuned in live to Super Heavy Radio. I am your host. I fear the Duke of Tears. I'm on my call host. He is 10,000 years. All of the Super Heavy fans. Everybody that's been supporting for as long as we've been on. Everybody who, um, again, is really doing the work out there. We just want to say praises, love, and light. And uh, thank you for once again coming through and supporting us, man. Um, it is again Monday night. You know how we do. There's a lot of different things going on. A uh, lot of lot of funny, significant things that are starting to manifest. A lot of uh, backbiting, you know what I mean? A lot of people going back on shit that they say, you know what I mean? The shit that they've exposed, but this is how it's supposed to happen in these times of, among times, you know? So we definitely want to give thanks and praise to the ancestors who have been rolling with us and holding us down for all this time, making sure that a lot of the work and the things that we've been doing is not in vain. Just for the fact being that there are so many people who are invested in uh, things in our community that are not really leading to us in a progressive, I'm not using that term progressive, but leading to us in an uplifted state. A lot of us, a lot of members of your community, especially the ones who profess the most that they want to see you free, want the opposite. And it gets to a point, guys, we want to have to really stand up and let these people know that you're not going to let them enslave you. You're not going to let them put you in a spiritual concentration camp uh, based on false ideology and false rhetoric. You're not going to be in situations where you subscribe to people's false ideology of you as well as the ideology that they've been trying to promote, pop off, since most of the temples uh, were infiltrated back in the days, you know what I'm saying? For those people that want to get more specifically on that, you need to holler at me for this week's class. You know what I mean? Because, again, there's certain things that I'll talk about on Super Heavy Radio Show, but for those people who have been in the classes, no, there's a lot of shit that I don't. Just for the fact that I don't want it regurgitated back to me from some other source or some miscellaneous dude who don't even know what he's talking about, but because he listened to the show or she listened to the show, they feel that they got the handle on what exactly we're going with this information. Because really, from the beginning of Super Heavy Radio, what we wanted to do is create a bastion, almost a a respite or oasis point where people can come that's not trying to get all of the hype and get all caught up in the dogmatic aspect of what this knowledge is as well as the clicky, you know what I'm saying, uh, club-type version of what the knowledge is too because these are the things that are literally acting as spiritual nooses around our neck, sucking the life out of us. And because, again, a lot of us don't or are not in the position to really um, – articulate the history of how it deteriorated into the stance that it is now. A lot of us are just left, you know what I mean, willy-nilly out here to figure it out for self. And that's not the spirit, especially when uh, there were so many ancestors that came prior to us being here to help us consolidate and get this all together. But what you got to understand and what you got to accept, brothers and sisters, is that there's a huge contingent of the population, specifically the conscious cultural population, that wants to keep everything exactly the way it is. And we've been saying it for years. We've been saying that um, there's a total difference between sovereignty, nationality, and what people see as fiscal responsibility, a.k.a. strawman acquisition. There's definitely a difference between, you know what I mean, you understanding more science and you living more science. There's a difference and a reason why certain uh, examples of what they now call uh, occultism are now being turned on their head by the same people who up until now have been selling you all these DVDs and all of this knowledge about how the white man was this and how the white man was that. Now we're going into the phase now where people are starting to backtrack and go back over foregone conclusions, such as the white man being the devil he ain't the devil no more, such as uh, the fact that the black woman and the black man ain't God, that the white man is just as much of a God as they are. This, this is, and this is not my ideology. This is what's being promoted now in your community. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, the white man ain't the devil no more. He's just as much of a God as the black man. The black woman ain't God. Um, what else? That uh, black men, black women need to start coming. I mean, white people start, need to start coming to your lectures, need to start integrating and giving you their science on how things are supposed to be in the conscious community and things like that. This is what these niggas advocate for you now. You know what I'm saying? So any of y'all don't want to be down with that, I don't know what y'all doing, but 
this seems to be the general consensus that everything that we thought was true is no longer true now. And now the new truth is the fact, again, that everything that we came up understanding about our culture, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding concerning our place here in the, the hells of North America are now switched up. It's all done. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all of the things that you thought was one way, now they're trying to tell you was another way. But again, the prophet told you that this would happen. Not only did he tell you that this would happen, he also, uh, not only did he tell you that, there were other people who was coming down the pike telling you that. You know what I mean? But again, it just seemed like there's always this instance where we don't really learn the 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 we don't focus on the annals of history as a historically broken people. We are starting to recollect what's going on. So when they created that agreement that basically denationalized y'all, it really, really took effect. And we don't. We are just really now in 2012. We are just really now seeing the full-on effects of that fourth denationalization that took place on July 3rd. Uh, 1881, at the Council of Madrid, excuse me, at the Convention of Madrid. Everybody will talk to you about the First Council of Nicaea. Everybody will talk to you about the Belgian Conference in 1881, but you ain't never hear no more talk to you about the specific denationalization conference that took place between three major powers, except here on Super Haven Radio. So if you hear anybody else talking shit about it now, and I have to be this direct about it, not for ego purposes, but for the purposes of clarity and following the through line of the information, because these niggas will come out with a whole nother thing now. Based on what I said, they're going to go and try to find a whole nother way to flip this thing on you, because the shit I'm telling you is not sugar-coated. Shit I'm telling you is not coming from no no Masonic order, no Freemasonic order, no pseudo-fraternal order, anything like that, because the stuff that I'm talking to you about is actually coming from what happened, y'all. So you got a lot of people walking out here talking about light workers, they bays and they L's and all of that. These niggas don't know nothing about that. I'm talking about males and females. They don't have no real knowledge on what this thing is really supposed to be. They still looking to try to find a way to get into their contract trust numbers as if that really exists. And I'm not saying that there is nothing like that that exists, but I am saying that the myths that are abound in this community are more prevalent than the actual truths, and that's a problem. Because you got these metaphysical fence sitters that sit on these that sit on the sidelines and watch what's going on and then don't make no choices. And then when you do make a choice and you do make a move, the first thing they want to do is comment on the moves you make. Comment on what it is you saying and what you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to get. That's because it's easy to sound positive all the time. It's easy to be in situations where you're around people and you always trying to look like the better person and all of that. But that's not real. You understand? Where you show me one, show me one book, show me one conscious, quote unquote, uh, esoteric or occult book that says that when you get conscious, you got to be positive, period, all the time. You show me one. Not even the Theosophic Society is kicking that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's kicking that. The only people that's kicking that, the only people who expect you to be docile with your intelligence and your consciousness is black people. You know what I mean? Or people who consider themselves black or people who have been uh, uh, confused to believe or whatever it is they believe about themselves and is now trying to promote an idea of who you are to you. As if you don't know who you are. As if some temple or some synagogue or some or some church or some... Uh, 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 ashram or whatever is going to be that much more clear and give you the real reality as to who you are. Can nobody do that but you? The most people can do is help clarify it for you. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what Super Heavy Radio is about. You know what I mean? But this is all a concerted effort leading towards something. But in order to really get there and get the people, we got to vet out and get out all of the, 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 the poisonous apples in the barrel because that's the thing that's holding up the progress. It ain't just white, man. So when these people say that, that's actually true. It ain't just white, man. This white man, they never had no power, the, the power that he 
belief that he had over you. All that power is based on a belief and a terrorist organization that in its very inception, people are always talking about the clan, the clan, it is, oh, the clan, the clan. These niggas, man, them dudes didn't start nothing themselves. Again, come to class on Wednesday, and I'll show you the original the original uh, status of the Ku Klux Klan, the original aspect of what the Klan was set up to do or what it is that they was doing. They was, they was originally joined together to stop prohibition, originally. And the original symbol of the Klan was no damn burning cross. You know what it was? It was a crescent and a star. The same crescent and a star, the same way that you see on the police in New Orleans, on their cop cars. Don't they call New Orleans the Crescent City? So there's a whole aspect of this thing where they've been trying to prom- promote to you over the years that it's just black people on it like this and white people on it like this and never the two shall meet. And these niggas is your perpetual enemy and they created situations where you're going to be enslaved to them and they always going to do that and they always been running your, they always been running your, um, they always been running your, country, and you ain't never had nothing until they brought your Bible to you and gave you Jesus, and then that was that. Right? But the original members of the Republican Party was all black. And they wasn't stroke, quote, 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 black mix. They was straight black moors of the old republic. But niggas don't want to hear that. Like I said, what if I told you last week that there was this documentation that says that after 1930 that there was supposed to be no meetings in the Morris Science Temples no more because the Morris Science Temples being infiltrated by too many, too many groups. Groups like the Chinese, groups like the Japanese, groups like the Nazis, groups like the Prince Hall Masons, groups like the Scottish Rite Masons, groups like the, the, the FBI, right? Groups like the Jesuit Vatican. All of these people were trying to get in the Morris Science Temple in the beginning. Up until 1930. So you ask yourself this. The documentation that I'm reading says that the Morris Science Temple was everything except a religious organization, a political organization, or a fraternal organization. So you ask me this. If this is what it says back in 1930, this is what the Moors were saying back then, how is it now that most of the Moors that's in these Masonic temples is Masons? How is it that most of the Moors in these Moors Science temples or outside these Moors Science temples, these niggas is dealing with straight up Scottish Rite, occultism, police, Jesuit, everything else? And don't act like just because you are, you Prince Hall or whatever, you you're not a Jesuit. <laughs> don't think that. <laughs> guess where your guess where your rituals came from? Guess who gave you your rituals? Your man Pike and a sellout named Thornton Jackson, right? I got pictures of the nigga. I done been building on this. We've been building on this since we started Super Heavy Radio. It's very hard. But the problem. Consistent when there's 10 other people want to have radio shows and disseminate the true energy. The same the thing they was doing back in the days. The same that's thing. Why, that's why I know that they're needed. Exactly. And I'm almost. All of the niggas that have been selling paperwork that have been fraudulent, I ain't sell nobody no paperwork since 2002. When I first filed my own shit. And I wasn't charging for people work. I was charging for fucking five years. years. But more than that, more than that, as you can tell I'm a little hoarse. More than that, and the hoarseness comes from, actually I'm detoxing. I'm not smoking, just letting a lot go. So I feel really like things are coming out. Anyway, um, the same people that did cause dissemination back in the day do it now. Whether you be a temple more and we not temple more, it's almost like, you know, there can be the two shall never meet, when really they can. It's just that spirit is not aligning. Something spiritually is telling me, don't fuck with this bitch. Something spiritually is telling me, I, I hear you think we're all doing the same work, oh, no. but you are pro- you, you're acting like Oprah. You want to you wanna run these niggas. You want to run the show, and there is no show to run. There's no show to run. This is not a production. This is an MTV, ABC, or VH1. This is about being clear about who has the, the level of knowledge and consistent understanding. Knowledge doesn't stop. So even though at times I've sometimes wanted to be like, wow, it's here, we have, you know, we could have more in our account for what we do. But I'm not charging $500 for retreats. I'm not charging $1,000 to come and hang out with me on the beach. I'm not charging 
um, ridiculous amount of money for nothing to get you entertained, really. It's like, you know, but I don't know. Sometimes people see the money and they're like, both of the niggas doing it. I've met people here that have come to my house swam on my pool and have been like, yo, I just got to get this and this. And I'm like, straight up, I, the paperwork that you are thinking can allow you to drive and free you up. You're going to end up getting caught up because there is a way to do it. And the way that these moors have done it has really caused more dissemination and more confusion. I know what I filed in 2002 because I sat there with my husband and my Ashira, Ashira L for four years after taking her astrology class in 1999. I sat there and did my own paperwork on my own computer. So when I filed myself and I filed in Kings County, I knew that it could work for me, but it wasn't something that I felt comfortable enough giving to everybody. So the people that were in my family and the friends that were around me, I can name five people. Um, I, I'm not trying to. I can name the people that I was around because they were on one hand. But this became, I'm seeing, you know, sometimes people say too close, too early, too soon. I feel like I've always been ahead of the time. And there's benefits to that and a lot of things that can be considered a negation. The negation is you sometimes share something before the general populace is ready to hear it. And I think that we've been writing that way for a while. So there's no anger. I just really, I want people to take more responsibility and to care more. If you are listening to a show or listening to someone that is trying, you know, it's good, it's good to strive to sound smart. It really is. But if you don't know what you're talking about, then stay in your lane and let somebody that does know build on the topic. Don't be so like, I got my own version of a seer, that you're like so quick to put out somebody who sounds like they listen to him. But really, if I ask a question, you'll tell right away that this person is not literary based. They're not, they're not knowledge based. They're into the popularity, and people are all not in a popular popularity game, but when you need a group to co-sign what you're doing, that is a direct result of needing social acolytes, of needing the applause when there is no show going on. This is not a show. This happened to me, more science culture, for a real reason. And I'll tell that story on another day, but... Really, I really want us to take responsibility because I know the things that Asir is sharing right now. I can hear the um, and see the waves of ripples that it's, it's, it's causing, and it's beautiful. It's just to say that let's stop trying to negate who is really wise in this because we're not, you know, sitting on a mountain of money and we're not negating ourselves from the community. I'm just separating myself from charlatans from people that say they do yoga, but they just sit in lotus pose. They don't breathe. They don't do shit. I'm tired of people looking the role but not doing the fucking work, you know, which is why I don't have my own Facebook page. I don't care who likes or comments. I'm trying to do the work and get the work done and share our stories because they're supposed to help us grow, okay? So really, even with this whole new wave, because and it makes sense now, all the people in the last three years, I think three or five years that have been really, this paperwork, you got to be a part of my temple, be a part of my church, be a part of my Coventry, be a part of my sex, sex shit, be a part of my, my cult, it, it, the time for that is ending. And I would have sounded dumb saying this four years ago. We were. But now we were. it's kind of making sense. It's like, you know what, I see what you're saying, and this is what I mean, patience. Patience is the greatest lesson, and I'm so thankful that I learned to just shut up and watch where the cards fall. And I say that to say, this is going to get really serious. We could really flip this shit into a real, real, um, Wait, I'm not even going to say what it is. We could really make this shit happen, and we are going to. But for people that want real knowledge, come to class every week because we will share all of the paperwork that I'm getting, all of the stuff that we're compiling. And it comes from people that... You know, it comes from a source of intelligence. You know, I can tell I can tell when people are just copying, cutting, and pasting, you know, 
private and confidential notices and putting them at the end of their emails, but they don't know what they're talking about. And law is something that is constantly growing. It is constantly switching and changing based on where we're living right now. So, you know, to be very aware and to know that not everybody is doing the same work anymore, and it's okay. It's all right. You know, some people are cut for this and some people are, are not. And the people that are not, don't have a purpose, it's just to say that your purpose is not to cause confusion. And I would like for you to take more responsibility for the things that are coming out of people's mouths and for where you where you choose to place your support. You know, even people that, oh, they type, they don't want to give us paperwork. Now I'm getting phone calls like, yo, the guy that gave me the paperwork, the driver's license stuff, you know, our car. I said, well, you didn't want to be my friend because you thought I was being tight and not giving you paperwork. But now that you're in jail and your husband, his car has been repossessed. Now you almost don't even want to call me to tell me that this happened to you, but you don't have a way out. And this is what I mean. You cannot sell freedom. You cannot. And I'm sorry for the individuals and for the groups that have been doing this. The time is none. Stop selling people paperwork that is getting them caught up. It is not good. It has nothing to do with nationality has nothing to do with sovereignty, has nothing to do with how we're supposed to be moving here. I filed my paperwork for a specific reason of inheriting money and going through a lawsuit with a hospital after 9-11. But I see that based on our, it's like don't follow people. Do it for your own purposes. Peace. That's that, That's pretty much, that's what it is. And to, to add on further, man, let's let's keep it all the way real. Like, if everybody, like right now, there's this there's more. Well, I talked a lot. I posted my Facebook page. I put up a thing, $700 trillion against the U.S. government, posted in the Washington Times, put a lean on them, trying to get everything or whatever. So the story I heard was a sister through, through, another, through a noble more, noble more hollered at me. And he told me, well, yeah, that's true, but there's a sister who got some paperwork or plates or whatever from him. Two weeks, two, to, two hours after her getting it, she locked down. So... So this is what it is. States want to leave the union. We've been talking about that. I've been talking about that. People, this is what I mean with people sleeping and not doing the knowledge. Like, I wrote about it in the Dark Code 418. I've been telling y'all that. I've been telling you that there was something called the Nassara Act. I've been telling y'all there was something called called the uh, National Secession Act. I've been telling y'all this for years. You know what I'm saying? Check the archives. This is not new. You know what I'm saying? But this is how I also know that people sometimes be complacent about the shit we be talking about. I'm not talking about nobody sleeping in the chat room, so don't get sensitive. I ain't saying that. What I am saying, though, is that we've been kicking so much real shit over the years that people don't even re- they take it for granted. They don't even realize, like, yo, this nigga been talking about this shit. Meanwhile, niggas, niggas in the other side of the game is trying to act like... See? Now it's time to stop. Now it's time to stop. Get off that organic shit. But Oprah, Oprah is expanding her business, her, to, do business now to do health care and organic lines, which means that this is all of the fucking food that's going to new organic food that's going to start poisoning all of the fucking black people who live and breathe and white women who live and breathe for what Oprah say. Her, her, her farm in Maui? Nigga, I wouldn't trust that food for as much as I could throw it. You know what I mean? Oprah's organic. Oprah's yeah, Oprah's organics, right? Oprah's harvest. Oprah's harvest. Oh, yeah. Harpo's harvest. But all she do is eat pork. All this chick do is live wrong. All she do is hate on black people. That's all she do. Don't believe me? Look at the interview that Tony Braxton did about how she shitted on her. Oh, yeah. So this is a way for them to get this black chick, use her as a portal, to get into all of the countries that don't want to deal with the United States no more because the United States is on their Monsanto shit or whatever, and this whole is going to let them do it. You know what I'm saying? Well, because this is what black people do. Black people are the ones that are infringing upon their own liberty. This ain't no cracker. This ain't no cracker coming down and telling you you can't do this, can't do that. Can't no cracker tell you nothing no more. You understand? The age, the age of the end... The age of race is officially over on the last day of history. The last day of history is on December 21st, 2012. That don't mean history stops. It just means the history that these devils have been giving you for the past 
6,249 years has come to an end. This is the new 25,000-year cycle. This is the new Quran. You understand? And so what's happening now? So when Farrakhan got in trouble, what's this? Why did they really get at Qaddafi? What was he doing that was so bad? What he was doing that was so bad, you got to remember, Qaddafi was one, of, was one of the emirs of the Barbary states, the Barbary powers. And before he was giving money to Farrakhan, who he gave money to? The only other so-called black militant organization or conscious black organization in the world to ever get money from Gaddafi was the El Rukins, the Moors, right? The black P-Stones from Shatam, the real niggas that was in the trenches, right? So they didn't want to say, oh, the El Rukins were selling drugs. What? So what? You know how many niggas that's on Jay-Z were selling drugs? Y'all niggas love him. Right? At least these niggas were selling drugs in a specific community to do what everybody else, every other ethnic group in this country do. They make money off their own people, exploit their own people to get enough money to create an underground community, an underground commodity community, so that way they can bridge it so that way they can bridge it into a a a a uh legit community. Don't believe me? Look at the Italians. Look at the Sicilians. Look at the Arabs. Look at the Chinese. Look at the Philippines. Look at the, look at everybody else but black people. Even the Puerto Ricans. Even the Dominicans. They get stores like no problem. When the last time you seen a bodega owned by a black man? <laughs> when was the last time you seen a black a business that was owned by a black man that was being solicited? Right and being promoted by other black people in a manner other than Facebook. So let me get this straight. So you got the number one population with AIDS, right? So you dying of all AIDS. You're the number one people in the world with AIDS. You're the number one people that in the world that's most miseducated, right? You're the number one people in the world dying from hypertension, diabetes, high blood pressure, right? You're the number one people dying of uh, uh, passing herpes and syphilis, right? You're the number one uh, black people in terms of all the black people in the world. Uh, now the report came out that the majority of black people, black males, is gay, right? So now we're all gay. Then we all in jail too, right? Then we all miseducated. Then we all ain't got no, no, no jobs, right? We all unemployed, right? Then black men ain't shit, right? Then black women ain't shit, right? So when does it stop? So why, why, would, you, why would you invest anything in your people? Don't you see what they're doing? And why specifically do it always got to be that black people is the worst shit in the world? Why? Because he who is last shall be first, and he who was first shall be last. They want you to go back to Africa. Why? Why? Think about this. Think about this. Of all of the years you've been conscious, all of the years you've been doing this work, you've been reading these books, reading about Africa, reading about Africa, when have you ever met one African? to bring you one of these same books from Africa. You ain't never seen that. Nigga said when Dr. Ben was bringing people over to Egypt, this nigga had the hustle going on because he was married to an Albion. And I'm sorry to stop to, 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 to tell you things about your, about your noble teacher that you may not like, but the fact that he was also trained as a Jesuit, that has nothing to do with me. I didn't make him do that. So don't get mad at I said the Duke of Tears for talking about what is really real and why certain things happen and why he can be in the situation he is now. That Albion that he married that took all that money from him, that from everybody on the, on the, on the trips and scams and all of that, that's the chick that took all his money. Where's she at? Where they at? They over in Africa, right? In quote, unquote, Egypt. Same thing with Ivan Van Sertima, rampant Jesuit. Sorry, the book is great. Go to Agent Moore. Thanks for that. But, again, he's another one married to an Albion. But that was a game. Didn't you peep that? Those people who was around in the 60s, all these niggas would talk all this black shit to you, but the first time they could get a white woman, that's the first thing they do? To the point now, I've seen, I've seen this interview with Wanda Sykes the other day. This dyke, she talking about, oh, well, I'm a black entertainer, so I'm supposed to be married to a white woman. Where does it say, where does it say in the contract that you as a black man, if you want to act, that you have to be gay? That you've got to be gay on screen? When did that become the number one benchmark to do movies? And why is it only indicative to black males? 
And what the hell is wrong with these black males that they will continue to take this role for fucking money? These niggas don't give a damn about you. Yeah, they want to get paid. I want to get paid too. But guess what? I'm not going to let nobody touch my booty to do it. I'm not going to let my son have to see me kiss a man on the mouth. I have my son see me have to be molested by a, a white man or, or some other shit like that to say, hey, well, I got this money so I can put you to, through college. Nigga, it would be better for you drop out, not go, for me to, <laughs> to give up my integrity and my soul for you to do that. But most of these niggas don't care. Like I said right now in the community, you got niggas that's right now is about to watch what happens within the next two years in this in this college community. You're going to be seeing nothing but factors in, in National Black Theater and all of that. And all of that. And all them niggas going to support it. And what y'all going to do? Y'all going to sit right there? Y'all going to continue to pay money to sit right there and watch this bullshit? Because if it's going to happen there, it's going to happen everywhere, people. When we was there, when we was there, we were, I was doing a lecture. We was doing a lecture. Selena, I'm doing a lecture. She's, I'm in the lecture. She stopped us. She said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Excuse me, who are you? And goes right to the white man that's in the front row in the lecture. And who got a problem with it? The black people. The black people who was holding the damn thing was like, oh, well, he's here all the time. And he's blah, 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 blah. She said, oh, great. Well, I don't know that from him. Let him tell me that. Why you always so gotta? Offended. Why you always gotta tell me offended. what the intent of the he white man is? Me like, how dare you offend my white supporter? Exactly. And if that's what it's about, then let's keep it real, and that's what it's about, man. And again, this what I'm talking to you about has nothing to do with race, even though it sounds like that. I'm because I'm not blaming the white man for nothing. That's the difference between me and these other niggas. I know the nigga the devil, but I don't blame him for being the devil. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's his nature. That's the nature. But I also know that a lot of that white man devil shit was ingrained and put into the so-called NOI within a certain amount of time. This don't excuse the fact that, you know, he still acts as devilish, but that the white man still be on some devilish shit or whatever. But, again, it's white man, black man, it's all the same shit now. So what this does mean is the fact that you have a concerted effort of people in this community that's now trying to get you into the Scientology phase so that way you could get audited up too. Like I said, the real reason why this nigga Farrakhan didn't go to jail after the, after he defied a presidential order was... Yeah, yeah. My friend Megan Diop. Yeah, there's some white folks that's more. I don't believe that, but again... They, they have to fight for it. You can't, cause you can't cash in on the white Caucasian card and then because the more shit is popping, you, you, you pay your homage to both sides. Yeah, but what... What that what the prophet said about that is that if you want to claim that, then you got to claim Celt, right? That's what the prophet said. He said you got to be a Celt or a Persian. So even now, that still means that means when you if you saying that you white anymore, that means you not, because there's no such thing as a white more. Yeah. There's no such thing as that. You know why? You know why? Until you could show me two Caucasians born in North Africa that's going to give birth to a jet black baby and then raise that baby in more science, then maybe I'll co-sign that. But until then, no. You're talking about people who were forced into conversion or who converted because they did not want to be enslaved and they did not want to be put into uh, forced servitude by the Moors. So let's keep it real, man. Don't call them white Moors. Call them what they was. Mamluks, let's get to what they were. If you want to Pick that up. Let's deal with what it is. They was either Mamluks, Janissaries, Odalisks, right? Muslim sons, Freemasons. That's it. You can't even put the Shriners in there because they basically pattern their whole shit after the Morris Science Temple anyway. Do you know that there was a such thing as the Morris, uh, that the Morris Science, uh, the Morris Holy Shrine at one point before they actually set up the Shriners? Did you know that? Did you know that the Nation of Islam, or excuse me, that the Morris Science Temple, why they shut down all of that? Because you had all of these different people trying to invade and infest and take what out of natural freehold birthright and inheritance was? Do you know that? No. These more because these Moors ain't going to tell you that. Because all of these Moors is descended from those Moors who basically were the ones who generationally got paid for the dissension in the first place. These, these, these Masonic Moors. 
still want to talk more history, but still wear an apron. And I'm sorry, you can't do both. You can't do both anymore. You can't do it. You can't do it. All that, all that apron shit, all of that, all that Jesuit shit. You could do all that if you want. Exactly. That means you was never on it then. You were never on it. You can't not be that. You could be a Muslim son, and we'll allow you to wear the sword at the upper part of your bed so that way you would always be reminded of the secret that you would never reveal the secret that was given to you. And after you study 35 to 50 years, you would be allowed to come into, your, come into Mecca and get free passes to Mecca to build with your brother Muhammad. That's one thing. So niggas can't tell me none of this degree shit, but what you also got to remember was that the movement back then was infiltrated. So we already set things in motion to bring the movement back to how it started based on a word-of-mouth basis. Because when a white man came over here, we didn't write nothing down. We knew everything off the dome, everything. The only thing we wrote down was the hieroglyphs and the the pictorials. And those were basically similar or symbol, uh, symbol literate stuff for those people, for the children who was coming up. We didn't have to write nothing down. We didn't need no physical contracts and all of that. Because we had something called the Kitua Society that was an ancient, super ancient society going all the way back maybe prior to the times of Atlantis. But guess who messed that up? These so-called Native American Indians that came after 1883, after the Buffalo Bill Wild Wild West show, and they started to act like they the ones, so that way they could take your place. Right? So please don't confuse my passion and my verve for my people and my culture with some sort of angst or hatred or frustration. Because really, this is not the time for us to be frustrated about it at all, because this is the time where everybody's going to be revealed. This is a great revealing. This is when you're going to see for your own self that these niggas have been trying to put you back in slavery since they've been making these DVDs for you. All CIA got to do, call one of these niggas that they already know has been distributing all these DVD tapes and say, you know what, send me this nigga tape because we want to do the Nas stand. Who said they ain't doing it? Why not? Why wouldn't they? At this point in the game, why wouldn't they? What, because they care about black people so much? Get the fuck out of here, man. All I'm saying, again, brothers and sisters, is let's stop fronting, man. Let's stop acting like these niggas has really got the knowledge and they don't. You know how many people have hollered at me about people within certain nations? And, again, the only reason why I don't be saying niggas' names and shit like that is because I ain't trying to give these niggas no credit for even being deceitful because you already know who I'm talking about. That's, that's the other side of the game that's so whack. Everybody know who's doing the whack shit and the shit, but ain't nobody cutting these niggas off. Ain't nobody isolating these niggas. Ain't nobody creating a thing like that. You try to create, you think like today, if some Jew came out and said, look, the Holocaust ain't never happened, all these Jews is liars. What? You have a whole nation of Jews against you. And we know that the shit was a scam. How about that? We know that Hitler and all these niggas was Jews and that they did that so that way they could Again, take your place as the chosen people on earth based upon you being uh, forced me in the Holocaust. And what did your president do? He co-signed that shit by saying that the Jews were the only people to experience a Holocaust in the world. Can you imagine that shit? So damn right these, these states want to secede from the Union. But again, I've been saying this. I wrote it in my book. My book been out for months. I mean, five months. I've been wrote it in there that this is what happened and how it would happen. You see what I'm saying? So all of this basically is leading to something, people. It's leading to something. This is the time of the great revealing. This is the great quickening. This is the time when you're supposed to come into and be confronted with the things that you were unsure about, but now, because of the right choice you made, you're supposed to feel validated in that. This is the time that we're supposed to be in. This is the time that we're in. You're supposed to see through these niggas off the rip. And I'm just not talking about niggas in the cons community because they small time. These niggas are small time, son. It's small time. These niggas is not really dealing with real, real knowledge like that. They dealing with enough to keep your beak wet. And then everything that they tell you 
six months today, six months later, going to be something different. Everything that I've been saying since I started doing this work has been consistent, has been going towards one arena, man. I ain't been flip-flopping. I ain't tell you this shit, and then next week I'm flipping it up, and then next week I'm flipping it up. And then the thing is, what I find is, Bill, is that the more inconsistent niggas be, the more bread they get off the people. What kind of shit is that? And I'm here with damn near $30. Yeah. With damn near $30 yeah. in my whole account. But again, these niggas, that's what I'm trying to say. what we have. Exactly. We have health. We have happiness. We have love. Exactly. We have the ability to eat still. Exactly. Even though I have no fucking food in my fridge this week. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Rent came. With the, we got an uh, upgrade in our, our internet connection. And it's like a buck fifty rent. It's like we have no money. But we have no money because I'm choosing not to rob fucking people. And because of the place where I live at and all of that, based upon they had certain uh, people around here that was doing whack shit in terms of paperwork and all of that, I ain't trying to exist. I ain't trying to do all of that right now. I'm trying to get everything I need to get consistent enough so that way when I do flip it back on these niggas, it ain't no thing. You understand? But, again, you got to know, you got to understand the ways of war. You got to know when to sometimes let things go and then go go undercover and be who the fuck you're supposed to be. Let them think what they want to think about you in the interim. Like I said, the, the, the documents that I got, and that I'll be showing in class, that I'll be showing in these classes on Wednesday, all that, basically said that all of these, all of this shit was shut down after 1930 due to the incessant infiltration. And that specifically the movement was not a political organization, was not a fraternal organization, was not a religious organization. It is a theocratic government. But here go the ill shit. In the document, when you read it, the Bay was like, when they, when they asked him what type of government it was, he said he didn't really want to get into that, which means that they didn't even want to really define it at that point to this devil that was interviewing them, that was interviewing him. He didn't want to define it, because once you define something to the point that you name it, that's it. It's now cemented in the world. The crackers are going to go try to get it. Boom. Remember all them years? There was no good white rappers. Remember that? Remember that? But what happened? We started slowing our own vibration down, getting caught up in money, getting caught up in, in illicit sex and strip rap and all this other shit, and it slowed the vibration of the music down enough that these niggas was able to master it, like everything else. So, again, I don't have to hate no white man. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to hate nobody on this planet because nobody on this planet is stronger than the divine creator, the one that blessed us enough with this knowledge and being born in the skin enough to have what we need to get where we need to go. Can't nobody stop that. Can't nobody come in between that. Can't nobody make no DVDs to this day. That's why you don't hear these niggas talking about no creator, talking about no God, no nothing like that. You hear them talk about Pan, you hear them talk about all these other deities and shit and everything else, but they ain't talking to you about your own divine spirituality. This is a divine national movement. Divine, which means God is involved. You understand? And most of these niggas who done put themselves up to be their own God and have you worship them, they'd be damned if you worship some other God that you can't see or that you see in the mirror that you don't want to acknowledge. Tell me I'm lying. I ain't never said one thing on this thing that was not true. And when I do make mistakes on shit, I always go back to let the people know because I care. You understand? So the problem is we're in a culture that deifies the bullshit. You understand? That deifies people that ain't really going to give them nothing. So what I'm understanding is that these people need to be where they at, and they need to stay in the position they at. They need to keep making the same DVDs, keep talking the same crap, keep doing the same debates or all of that. Keep trying to find ways to let this devil into your shit. Keep letting them do it. Keep letting them do it. See what happens. Keep listening to Peter Moon. Keep listening to Alex Jones and the rest of these devils. That's straight up niggas that's selling their tapes is going to jail right now. I don't know if they told you that. Sell an Alex Jones tape on the street let one of these pigs find, find you and see what happened. David Icke tape, see what happened. David Icke ain't coming to bail your ass out. 
Nah, but these niggas, keep, keep keep listening to me. Keep going to these niggas like they got handle on what you should be doing for your people and your nationality. Keep keep doing that. Keep disrespecting your ancestors with that shit. Keep doing it and see what happens. Keep it up. Because, again, man, when a nigga don't fall, stand for one thing, he'll fall for it all. And these right now, you got a whole bunch of fall guys in the game right now that's really getting a lot of good people screwed up. And that shit ain't got nothing to do with nationality. and ain't got nothing to do with paperwork. It got to do with ego. And the fact that these niggas love the devil because the devil gives them nothing. You understand? Nothing. You really think they would be talking this shit if, some, if people like Khalid Muhammad and these niggas was alive? You really think they would be talking this white man ain't the devil shit? That shit was real? Look, every time these niggas come up and start talking about how the white man is the devil, things like that, who was the last person to talk that shit? Malcolm X, right? When he came back, and look what happened to him. <laughs> Keep following behind that. Keep following behind Edomites to see if you don't become a sodomite because that's what these niggas are turning you into. Because the more science shit that these niggas are doing, all that don't have nothing to do with the reality of what more science really, and more science and history and culture really is, man. You're talking about a science and history and culture that goes beyond this planet, man. Y'all niggas is, is, is filing paperwork to show that you got dominion over one part of it? What the hell is wrong with you? The document that I said said that this is a worldwide organization that says that but said that Noble Joe Ali was the head of the American side of it. Remember, when they destabilized Moors, they denationalized Moors after July 3rd, 1882, that went all over the planet, which means wherever you was at, you had to become the citizen or subject of whatever the city you was in. When prior to that, you had a universal global jurisdiction that nobody could lock you down. You understand? You see why they needed to get rid of you? You see why they want you to always come from Africa? You could look at an African and look at a black man from America and see that we're not the same. Just because we're melanated don't mean that we are genetically identical, man. This African ain't my twin. We cousins. But they want me to believe that I came out of them. Why? When I could, when, when you dress up an African, based on his dark skin, he could, he looked like an African. That's it. Whereas over here, I could be dressed up like a Moor. I could be dressed up like a Franciscan Moor. I could be dressed up as, as a this and a petticoat and all of that. And I could look like any nationality. That's indicative of the Moors here. Sorry. But again, when I say more, I'm using that as a term to to denote melanated or what some people refer to as black or what Elijah Muhammad refers to as the triple stage darkness. So again, if the Moors were the one who saved Farrakhan from getting locked down, right, then how is it that this nigga, instead of going back to the Moors who helped him, he taking his people where? To the Scientologists? To the Satanists? You really think that shit would be going on if Khalid was alive, son? <laughs> you really think that shit? Y'all niggas really think that all this would be popping off like that? I know people like Brother Daoud is bugging <laughs> in New York right now. I know that nigga is tripping balls behind this shit. You understand? There's not too many of us left, people. I'm sorry, man. There's not too many people that's really, really ready to hold on to what it means to really be melanated, son, to really love your culture so much that you're going to say, no, I'm not mixed. That's another good point. I had a... People always ask me, what's your son mixed with? I said, nigger and nigger. You know what I mean? You have you, you have good on, online the other day, uh, somebody put up some shit talking about mixed race people always win, and then I put up something talking about, oh, so I mean, what full-blooded black people always lose. Then somebody went and proceeded to really tell me, really proceeded to tell me how my ancestors was raped and how due to slavery and the raping of my ancestors and all that, that nobody is really black or white, that there's some of me and you and you and me. Or, so then I replied, well, everything that you're talking about is coming from anthropologists, and all anthropologists since 18, what? 32 have been trained in eugenics, which, again, is what? The false anthropological view that Caucasian people are the basis of humanity on the planet. 
So that means everything you're saying. Same thing with the feminists in the college communities. Every you want thank you, Super Lion. You coming in, you trying to tell me? Isn't it ill how they always want to tell you where your people come from, how you was raped, how you was enslaved, how you was this, how you was that? And so then, boom, and then I qualify this shit. I'm like, yeah, so we'll qualify that, though. Everything that you're talking about with anthropologists and all that shit, all that shit is all based on eugenics and racism anyway. So really, your, your, your point is moot because it's coming from a racist ideology, right? Any comment on that? Nope. We go then instead... I get uh, inundated with other people talking about, oh, well, you know, yeah, black, I'm Blasian, I'm black Tino, all of the pseudo fake nationalities, niggas coming out talking about, oh, you full blooded this, nobody can be full blooded black. Yes, you can. Tell that to the police officer that's beating the dark skinned black boy almost to death, that he ain't full blooded, that he ain't a full blooded black man, and see what happens. All of these deaths that I'm seeing, all these people getting shot and killed by police, is all dark skinned black people. And black women. But niggas are still becoming police, right? Niggas are still doing it. So like I said, G, when the thing goes down and the creator asks you what you do to destroy a civilization, what you do to show and prove the original man of God on the planet, what you going to say? What you going to say, Stacey Dash? Oh, I voted for Mitt Romney. This, this, do the knowledge to this. This dude, Chad, right, looking looking at the 85s, how they get down. This dude, Chad Ocho Cinco, right, allegedly headbutted this chick, Evelyn Lasada, in the head, right? This nigga lose his, his, his job. He lose all his endorsements. He lose his, he lose everything, right? Now, they, now everybody done ran through this chick in the industry, in the NFL, right? NBA, NFL, everybody, you understand what I'm saying? To ran through this chick. But once he decides to hook up with her or whatever happened with them, now I'm not saying niggas need to headbutt shorties. I ain't saying that. But what I am saying is, Stacey Dash now, on the other hand, Gabriel, uh, Gabrielle Beauvais, on the other hand, both these chicks was married to white men who was beating their ass, right, since the day they got married, who was beating their ass and cheating on them with every other nationality except the black woman, calling them nigger, right? That's what Halle Berry man was calling her, right? Calling her nigger in front of her kids, talking to her daughter, you ain't no black woman, you ain't no nigger, you're white, right? And this bitch what? You think she learned a lesson? No. She go get another Castilian white man. But they're going to put out shit talking about, oh, the black community thinks that I've abandoned them, but I'm still here and I still... Get out of here, man. Get out of here, man. Look at look at Jay-Z. They working this nigga to death. Look at the ritual on that. Soon as that nigga did that Barclay performance, what happened right after that? Hurricane Sandy. You don't see the connection? You don't see the inauguration in that? So what nigga want to say, oh, that was hard. Harp is old school, nigga. Harp is, Harp is, that's nothing. That's, that's, niggas, niggas in Alaska about to shut that down. The people in Alaska about to shut that down. You need to get to the real shit. You need to get to the, to the, to the infrasonic undulation. You need to get to the TTA resonance. There's no snacks anymore. It's time for bed. It's 10 o'clock. It's 10 o'clock, baby. It's time to go to bed. Let's go. Take a bath. Let's go take a bath. Okay, you brush your teeth? Great. Got it. Let's brush your teeth. I got it. So this is what it is, man. They dealing with the real scale of technology, the scale of tech, man. But that's all technology that your ancestors created. But but black people don't even believe that. Because the white man says that Atlantis is a myth. So therefore it gotta be a myth. But when the white man says to Mick, he also say that he was the one who was there. And he made pictures of himself, blonde hair, blue eyes, all in Atlantis, right? So was it there or was it not there? And why is it that we could talk about all these super ancient cultures, but we don't never see no black people? We see everybody else, people that look Indian, people that's blue, right, people that's this. But we're supposed to be what? The oldest people on the planet that come from where? Africa, right? But they don't never show you none of that shit. Whenever you see an African on TV, he's a damn slave, or or he running from a white man, or he's doing this or doing that. I'm brown, my husband's white, so that makes our kids kind of tacky. See, this white woman on TV, she said, I'm brown, which is... She's Middle Eastern, she's Muslim. She's Muslim, she's Middle Eastern. She's Puerto Rican, so she don't get judged unless she drink it. She's like, I don't care. Wow. See? I can't judge Muslim women are iconic. 
She said, I married a white man. See? He's a Muslim woman to improve my credit. See? These bitches on Nick, Nick Moms. On Nick Moms. Telling you right there. To improve my credit. To improve my credit to marry this white man. She said, my kids are khaki. This is this is this is what they doing. This woman, she a Muslim woman. She decide I want to get my credit straight, so I'm gonna marry this white man, hook my money up, and then my kids because they don't have no nationality now that that I married this white man, um, they gonna be khaki. Mhm. 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 Yeah, she act Puerto Rican. She'd rather be Puerto Rican. Of course she got the work from the white man. Why no one no fat woman like that? Okay, I don't need to watch it now, though. Don't throw me off. You did? Like, these people have no, like, like culture, integrity, you know what I mean, history of your people. This falls on deaf ears, son. This don't have nothing to do with the world we live in anymore. So for those of us that care about those things, you have to understand you are really a pseudo-minority. But in the new world, you're the majority. It's just that the new world has is manifesting slowly, incrementally. Because in order for it to be fully realized, those of us in this world have to realize that this world is totally done. And most niggas here is holding on, man. Like a lot of moms will talk all this shit right, but when it really comes down to it, they you know what it takes to start a government? You know what it really takes to run a government? Ask somebody in government right now and, and, and ask them what it takes to run a government. You'll see what they tell you. And that government is not even the real one. You haven't had a real police officer in this country since 1791. You ain't had a real judge in this country since, 17, since, since 1800. So what are these people, what are they policing? What are they? They're not even human. They're what's called in law creatures of law. You know that that's a term? That that is a term that describes anybody that works for the judicial system? That they are creatures, meaning monsters, meaning that they are inhuman. When you join up with that shit, you lose your humanity. When you became a bay in the empire, you didn't lose your humanity. You just accepted the natural delegation that you needed to do to help perpetuate your people. But they got it. They got niggas twisted. They got niggas, niggas in binds. They got niggas thinking that the fake shit is the real shit, and the real shit is the fake shit. Like you got niggas, you got niggas right now think that think that Doctor York is in jail. This nigga ain't in jail. Listen to Don um Don Nicole Leon. She'll tell you that that nigga ain't in jail. There's a guy named Dwight K York in jail, but that guy's from the Sudan. Excuse me, that guy's from Ghana. Your doc said he's from Sudan, from the line of the Ansars. For those people that don't know who the Ansars are, the Ansars were the Moors who basically took took that cartoon from the British on behalf of the Mahdi, the great Mahdi, who had ties over here as well. This is why York started out as an Ansar, because that's where the community he was coming from. So what I'm trying to what I'm trying to express to you, brothers and sisters, is that there is a lot stranger things under heaven and earth in the age undreamt of that we are on the precipice of. We are right on the cusp of getting all of this real shit straightened out. And these niggas is scared. <laughs> they are scared. I'm telling you, man. I ain't never I ain't never lie to you, man. Because I ask for what I want. You know what I'm saying? But the problem is, again, people have been so beat up and browbet and gave so much fake money to these other niggas that ain't really doing nothing with it. Now, when I start kicking real shit, it's like niggas have already been used up. So I don't get no help. So the only help I get really is her, is the queen and the baby. You understand? Just how much work we put in this shit to the point that we have, willing, we have turned down money. We turned down situations, lectures, and all of that because they were psychological operations or setups. 
I was there, I'm kicking all this Morris Science Temple. I know all these different walls from Morris Science Temples across the country. Ain't not one of them niggas want to bring me in, but you bring these other niggas in that's Masons. That's because I know the, the movement was infiltrated. Not now. In the 30s it was infiltrated. So you have generational agents that's raised up in the Morris Science Temple, that's raised up in the Hebrew Israelites, that's raised up in the nation of God's earth, that's raised up in the nation of uh Islam, that's raised up in the RBG, that's raised up in all that shit. They, done ra- they have been raised to be agents in these groups that you've been paying your due money and all that shit in, in Masonic lodges and all that shit. Didn't Nas said in the rap that if, I, that if I do a murder or whatever, I know I'll be okay because all I got to do is go to a Masonic lodge and hide out because there's one in every, cause there's one in every, every one of the 50 states. He's telling you. You don't think that these serial killers, you think these niggas just be killing their kids, raping their kids for no reason because they're crazy, right? Because they're just crazy, right? They, they, this is where this is coming from. How many, we've been telling people that they've been doing this sex ritual to try to get to the other side of Pluto through the, through the anus of little boys and little girls. Through the anus of little boys and little girls. They've been doing this, this, this typhon, this, this, this uh, tunnel of typhon ritual where they try to get to that. Yeah, God, like I, like I caught niggas trying to put they, they tongue in my son's mouth, son, and step to them, like, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, he's so pure. Oh, he's so pure. oh word, nigga, that was the last time you ever see my son. And again, these, these is niggas that's doing lectures. These are niggas that's out here. You understand what I'm saying? Pedophiles and all types of shit, because maybe they don't want to do that, but regardless, when you get possessed, when you take that oath, People don't even realize when you take that Masonic oath, you break the three commandments right there. Thou shalt not take the name of thy Lord, they, the Lord thy God in vain, right? Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, right? And um, the other one. Where? No. That's false witness and take my name in vain. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Right. Yeah, that goes under. That goes under the one I said, right? So I'm not saying that that's. And again, that's not Christian. What I just said to you, these commandments, these shits ain't Christian. Stop localizing yourself or stop allowing yourself, your mind, to be isolated to one aspect of some sort of culture that don't exist, man. Or or, or because the, the Bible shit was, turns out to be some mind control shit that the Bible itself somehow is a mind control. That ain't true, man. Stop letting these niggas gas you. Stop letting them mess with your common sense, man. Look, my great grandmother died calling for Jesus. She was calling for Jesus. The day she was dying, she was calling for Jesus and she was calling for me. At the same time, you understand? Know kind of freaked me out. Because then when I come in, she said, Jesus? I was like, no, Ma, it's, it's your grandson. She's like, oh. And then talking to me and Jesus interchangeably. But she called for both of us. And I wonder why my mother hates so then, I, of course, now I wonder why my Easter star mother got problems with me. You know what I'm saying? Or worse. So at the time this is happening, I'm doing it now. So what? My grandmother is whack, or my grandmother is somehow uh, under my control because she believes that Jesus to the day she died? No. I believe that her mental power and fortitude was so ill that she actually went and saw Jesus at the end. But she used me as an archetype for that to do it. So what that say about me? What that say about you? Because I ain't special. This is all of us. These niggas don't have no soul, son. You can't have no soul and, and, and serve the ancestors at the same time. You cannot be a free man. You cannot wear an apron that says that you are the devil, that says that you have been raised and raised up by God to be the devil and then want to still then come and kick more science to me? Who's we? You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's real like that, see? And these niggas is playing. They playing games with you. They playing bait and switch. They playing let's flip ideologies now and make everybody just totally just say, you know what, I'm done with all these conscious niggas. That's why I don't fuck with this black shit anyway. And you know what? There's a part of you that's right for doing that. Because these niggas is wasting your time. They wasting your time. They're creating all these different movements and all of that. They can't even stay together. These niggas can't even stay together. Don't you notice that when these little collectives start, that by the second week or third week or, or second month of it actually being collective, being together, that they're no longer together? You don't see that? I do. 
I do. I see it all the time. So what? These people, they what? So how are you going to teach me how to unify myself when you can't be even be unified with the niggas I first noticed you with? But I'm crazy? Come on, man. But see, niggas get it twisted because we look young. They get it twisted. We look young. But what they don't understand is that when you really put yourself on the path, this this knowledge makes you stop aging, nigga. <laughs> you stop aging. You talk about immortality. I'm talking about the real shit, son. The real shit. She got carded. We went to the thing. She wanted to order a drink at the restaurant. They carded. They said, well, can I see your ID? I said, wow. We doing something right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We doing something right. And like I said, the, this is this goes beyond racial. This goes beyond uh, uh, ide- ideological barriers. This goes beyond uh, individual barriers. This goes beyond whether you like me or not, whether you co sign with I don't give a damn. You understand? I've been doing this show from the beginning and letting people know the same thing, just deeper aspects of it. But the closer we get, We, we're going to get the calls in at, at what you call it after I finish my little diatribe. Because I'm seeing all this shit go down. I'm bugging. Do you know that the original, like I said, the original symbol for the KKK was the crescent and the star, man? That they was wearing feathers and shit? Do you know that the original, the reason the reason why that the Nazis were trying to in, 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 infiltrate the Morris Science Temple? Do you know that the original Thule Society was founded by the Kaisers and one of the biggest... One of the physics. You know what I'm saying? Do you realize? Do you real do, do the knowledge to that? That the original clan uniform was red and white, and they was wearing feathers and crescents and stars with masks on, but they wasn't killing black people. This is what's bugged out. The Knights of Pythias was doing that, but the original clan wasn't doing that. They was going in and burning down liquor houses. They was totally against prohibition. When you really do the knowledge, one of the highest degree secrets in the Nazi party, in the Hammerskin party and all of that, is that the original Kaisers that basically founded the Black Sun Society and the Thule Society were all Moors from the Bavarian society, from the Bavarian nations of the Holy Roman Empire, going back, starting or ending with uh, the assassination of the last Kaiser, the Archduke Ferdinand. Niggas, don't, niggas can't tell me this history shit. You understand what I'm saying? You niggas talk this shit. But this is this this type of knowledge is what allows you to just surpass certain shit. You just you see a clan's nigga trying to burn a cross and all that. That nigga, that shit don't mean nothing to me. You wearing you wearing the ceremonial garb of my ancestors. Do you know that that the white hood and the and the sheet and all that was was worn by the Moors in Granada? That that was what the high priest wore when we was doing the when we was doing the annual circumambulation due to the uh, solstice and the circumcision festivals. Do you know that? No, we don't. So therefore, it was a psychological operation to turn you against your own people, your own culture, images of your own culture, to further denationalize you, to further put you into a, to, into the trick bag as a stateless person. You think these niggas got a resolution with that? Why you think that the nation of Islam and the KKK can have a a treaty, a peace treaty between them? Why you think that? Because they was trying to use the nation of Islam to find a way back to the Moral Science Temple. Hear them tell it. The niggas that they killing ritualistically and all of that was to force niggas to wake up and rise against them and exterminate them. This was one of the original degrees in the shit. So who is really the enemy is what I'm saying. Who is really the one that's against you in this whole fight? Is it really the white man? Is it really the black man? Or are you dealing with something else? You're dealing with a composite of the two. And the sum of all the parts connected. You're dealing with an octopus, Cthulhu, Right? Like I said, I told you, these niggas from Pike, from the days of Pike, they've been doing these satanic rituals. They've been trying to manifest energy from the cliff off, they, which is the tree of death. They've been trying to 
inject themselves into the consciousness of the future, which represents the child. So when they put their penis in the child with the negative intent, the malefic intent, their sperm is the rocket ship to these niggas, and they're pushing it forward into the unknown space. So that way, when the child now starts to get triggered by the trauma, they can live in the mind of the child and then use the child's spiritual psyche to project themselves to the planets beyond Pluto. This is what your enemy is on, homie. You understand niggas are studying 35 to 50 years to learn what I'm just giving you for free? That niggas is dying for what I'm telling you. People are actually getting killed, raped, tortured, maimed. And I'm just telling you this shit. But the only reason why I can do that and not fear no type of impunity and nothing like that because I wasn't stupid enough or wasn't lonely enough or idle enough to feel like I needed a group or needed somebody else to define what my knowledge was going to be. Like I said, these crackers will tell you anything. This, 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 these people were so quick to tell me that my ancestors was a slave and that due to the fact that they was raped by white men and all this other shit, that I could be them and they could be me. I said, well, my ancestors didn't own no slaves and wasn't raped by no white man. They was the ones doing the raping. <laughs> what, that don't make it better But you, God, I'll be damned if, you, if, if I'm a slave If you want to say I'm a slave Then I'm going to bring it back to who was really the slave Because y'all niggas is too easy Y'all niggas is too quick to just throw that shit up And just throw it up in there Like it is, ain't no thing, you quick Oh yeah, he came from a slave Every Why is it every movie with black people dealing with the past The black man in it Who don't look like a slave Gotta be a fucking slave with the word slave means Slovak. You could never be a slave, even if that was your in, your 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 appellation, unless you were Caucasian born from Slovenia and put into forced labor to by the Moors. You got niggas that's not even in the country, right, that's trying to create ways to deal with shit that they don't have to deal with, things like UCC and all that, to then, what, go back into it? Like, what are you doing? You don't even have to do that. Because everybody is everywhere. You know what I mean? But there's been consistent people. There's been people who have been consistently dealing with the same thing. And those people, what I peep, they are always the ones that everybody else is not necessarily talking about. They are underground. So those are the ones that I pick up. The brother Big Man, the brother Daoud, uh, uh, Booker, T. Watt, Booker T. Coleman, Yafa Bay. You know what I'm saying? Like the niggas who don't get no real, no, no, Queen Valari. Everybody got something to say about her, but I ain't never seen no information of her wasn't true. I ain't never hear nobody getting paperwork from her going to jail. I ain't never heard that. You know what I mean? And there's plenty of us. There was a guy named Uriel Pay. There's two more in particular that I built, three more in particular that I built with that put me on. They were the ones that, you know what I'm saying, who, who blessed me or based upon my consistency, though. You see what I'm saying? Who blessed me to be able to get some of the documents and stuff that only some of the adepts will get or have and have been sitting on and ain't been giving nobody else in the temple that you've been going to every other week. They're talking about Islamism. No, what Jolly wasn't talking about no goddamn is- Islamism, man. He wasn't doing that, dude. He wasn't doing that. Of course they're going to shut it down in 1930. You know, Taj, Taj and Rod from, yeah, I like Taj. Taj, too. You know, he be, he be putting in his work. You know what I mean? But it's very few, man. It's very few. <laughs> A word? <laughs> Thank you, Duran. Thanks for holding it down, man. Thank you for holding it down. But again, they they people like that don't want me on no. They don't want me on hidden colors. They don't want me on that. I'm telling you, they don't. Exactly, people that. But that's what it always is. People, thank you, Sunday. Sunday basically said that people in the chat room said that it's really whack. That people who are not really on it are the ones who get it, but the people who are really on it are getting the accolades. But the people who really really doing it ain't. But we are. People that are getting the accolades, it's only for maybe like a couple of hours. There's no longevity. It's like people that have good careers. You can either, you know, the point is when you're talented, you have longevity in your career. 
some of these people are short-winded, and some of them, I'm thankful that information that we're putting out is inspiring people to think of how to create other um, aspects of, you know, just learning materials. But, you know, I appreciate that some people keep that. Cause I keep I'm glad. That. I'm very glad. But at the same token, I also see what guys lead it, and these guys that are leading it, some of them might have other personal issues that we not, we're not aware of. They might not feel confident around another good-looking man. They might not feel like they're going to be stressed and or hurt. Yeah, but now you're talking about and, ego. That's the thing. Yeah, but, don't, but everything in front culture. of a camera is ego and culture. Yes, it is. Don't forget that people still want to be seen. They still want popularity and friends, and that's why some people really get into this shit. To, to, to face the fact that they are lonely, to get over the fact that they don't have friends. Like, like I would have niggas, they, they would, people would holler at me and be like, yo, niggas be really trying to go at you on a subliminal. It's like, yo, these niggas did a whole thing about digging up all of the fucking great ancestors and all the people doing the work today and all that. These niggas say, yo, they mention everybody but you. I said they can't because in the end, I'm these niggas' spiritual father. That's what's really going on, and I figured it out. Lifetime. In this lifetime, and that's what they don't like. So I get a lot of love from the people because the people are the ones that protect us. I ain't got to worry about these niggas. I was in New York. Like I said, these niggas make it seem like the syndicate got the shit wrapped. Son. I was in New York for about two months in Harlem, in the street, by, by for dolo times. In the, in the spot, all on the 25th, walking right past these niggas, right there. These niggas ain't doing nothing because they want they bluff. Remember, the devil is a bluffer. When the devil sends somebody, he sends groups of niggas. When the creator sends somebody, he sends like two or three people, man. Don't believe me, look at Lord of the Rings. <laughs> the fellowship of the ring. Niggas get together when something's supposed to happen, we're supposed to deal with it, and then dissipate. Created on one, everybody together. That's what I'm starting to feel like. I'm starting to feel all this unity, unity shit we've been talking about. Nah, God. They don't. Nah, God, they got to. Yes, they cannot big us up. They cannot talk about us. But you guys, the people, you got to step to them. You got to force them to do the knowledge. And no, no, people are doing it now. I'm not saying that you don't, but you got to do that. You got to advocate for us. Because we, we really, as it stands, we're not even supposed to be dealing with all of them. The only reason why I bring them up is because so many people have been hurt physically, spiritually, financially by these entities, you understand, that have no real acumen for anything other than confusion and destruction. So, again, there was plenty of time for niggas to come in the game and do their knowledge and do their little thing and all that. Niggas didn't want to do none of that until they seen the homies doing it. Then it became a problem. Then it became a big thing. Then it became pushing niggas away so that way they could be in the forefront. I had niggas literally come out here, convince me to do tapes with them, then take the tape. Put it out there and basically say, yeah, you know, this, you know, I'm coming in now because the brother's passing the torch on to me and all this other shit. This is what niggas was doing. I had niggas having sex with women, telling them that they are my brother and things like that so that way they could get, and so that way they could get some type of, I don't know. But where's the women? Why would you sleep with a nigga just because he say he's my brother? I, where, where they do that at? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I mean niggas that's doing lecture. I'm talking about conscious niggas. I'm talking about when we was going every Friday for five years straight, four years straight, out there to build with Myra Shira L and Queens, pick up the Queens, all those people who've been put out where they're trying to train you, we building with you, we sending you stuff, you know what I'm saying, hold it down. Um, these niggas was going to strip clubs and all that other shit, laughing at me. You understand? Know laughing, like, oh, you going out to do that now shit again, nigga? Ah, oh, nigga, you need to come with us to do this, this, and that. Now, these same niggas, these same niggers, N-I-G-G-E-R-S, these same niggers are on TV acting like these niggas is in law libraries every fucking day. But how can you do that? How can you be in the law library when you don't even know, you don't even know how to file shit? When everybody, when everybody file the paperwork, who they file it with? The Department of State, right? The Department of Treasury. That ain't who you're supposed to be filing paperwork with if you want to be recognized as a government. If you want to get money, you know what I'm saying? That's something different. But if you really want to make something happen, son, you got to go to the devil directly. You got to go to the one people who already got your shit on file. And because they nobody, and because they nobody really following with them, that's how you know these niggas can't. They probably can't. You understand? 
because based on the oath and obligation, under the pain of death, right, that they have to have certain secrets and certain things bound up where they can't talk about it. Well, again, I ain't never, I, I don't have that handicap. I don't have that spiritual deficiency. You can ask me anything you want, I'll tell you. If I know, and if I don't know, I'll try to find out. All I ask is that the people do their job, which is support the real people that's doing the real work, man. And when you hear these niggas talking all this bullshit, inject some real wisdom to them and let them know where this shit coming from and let them know that they playing themselves. Because to dishonor me and this queen, after us not doing nothing but helping people all these years, you disrespecting your ancestor. You disrespecting our saw. You disrespecting our set. And I can say that. And hey, Ru. Because this little boy. Be the people champ. Sometimes, sometimes I feel bad because I've got to put out emails to try to get people. And I'm like, why am I emailing people about class when either they're going to pay somebody $500 for a lie or be like, $25, fuck them. Like, wow, $500, $25. Or $2,500. And I'm giving actual, like, Two hours of streamlined PowerPoint Anybody shit. That has but because, class, no. but because I'm not, you know, I'm I'm not ten people deep, and people that come in my life are like, great, I'll help, but give me some dick. Not to your dirty pussy, no. You didn't get no fucking dick after meeting you for a week. Put some fucking work in. Help circulate some books. Maybe I'll fucking wife you up and tell us, dear, this bitch is worth some pussy. This bitch is worth it. But she's not. I've met. Mad shorties that the fucking invite has been there, mm-hmm. and I've been like, yeah. you slept with more people than us you know I mean? combined. I can't do it. You gotta I come clean. If not, I'll meet some bitch maybe when she, you, gotta come good you know, clean good faith and clean hands. Or I'm passing it. Pussy, dick, all of it. I'm passing it because I don't want to get caught up here in the same rigmarole that has taken place. This is our last incarnation. This is the best time to be alive. Really understand that people that are hating are supposed to do that. Almost embrace them and know that they're there to usher further evolution in your development. Straight up. And if you're really doing this metaphysical shit, then know that the ancestors are going to have your back so much that when you pray at night and you say, yo, keep me away from bullies. Them bullies might be people that are fucking disguised as your best friends. And when you keep asking God to really... Keep you away from drama before it ensues. He might, he might bring shit up. You might see shit in people that you don't even want to see in your friends yeah. because you're like, damn, this was my homegirl of ten years, yo, okay. and this bitch is a fucking hate. Like, not even a hater, but a studier. I've had my girl. I've had girlfriends tell me, I really, you know, thank you for inviting me in your home. And one specific that I rolled with hard for like eight years. She was mad cool. She loved being around us. Great girl, all of it. From Egypt, knowledge history, talking all day. But when I come to find out, she tell me, no, I'm studying you. I want to learn how to be, okay, great, study me. But don't covet what you're studying and then or then try to be, become me in other ciphers and, and step me down or thing. Same thing, I'm showing this woman how to, like, you know, massage her baby's legs. And then the next week it's like, you're the, it's like, Right, son, it's crazy when you hook people up. They really feel like they got the fucking, the pattern on that shit. And that's why you got to let it go. You got to give, when you're sharing, you got to really share and say, I'm giving this for the greater good, and I don't expect anything in return. Sometimes you got to do that. But I keep it real. I go, no, I do. I expect shit in return. It might not be from this person. It might not be from this person. But I expect something in return for service you know, forgiving, and it's not this by time, it'll be the next that we rise up and are acknowledged as what we need to be acknowledged as, but even here, I'm coming out with an album, niggas is very talented on some actual creative shit, I think it's funny when I listen to people's music and you don't even know what the fuck their favorite color is, it's like, bitch, I listen to 15 songs, yeah, I know what books you read, what the fuck did you stand for, what's your fucking, who broke your heart, what you in love with? What what, do you, what 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 drives you to wake up in the morning? Like it can't be a, reading a fucking book. Like it can't be studying now. It's not like you've got to do more. You've got to breathe, bitch. You've got a pussy. You've got to eat food. Can you be multi? Can you do more than just be smart and emote? 
stuff that doesn't even tell us who you are, I'm blabbering. I'm out. No, I am. 1030, I'm tired. I'm off. Peace, y'all. Please donate some funds to us, like, for real. Shit is really real. Even if you don't want to donate, spread the word. When you hear niggas trying to really do shit, just please send them to people that aren't going to rob them, that aren't going to... That's why they're not hollering at us. Why, you know... There's mad, mad, mad. There's mad lecturers out there, and it's hysterical to me that they all, whatever. Peace out, homies. I'm done. No, nah, we give we give love, son, because it's about that. This whole thing, like the prophet says, the divine national movement. This is about love, man. But the problem with the with with love is that people take that shit for weakness. And there's something in this conscious community where they don't hook you, hook, try to hook niggas up with this new age shit, where it's like you can't stand for nothing. You can't have no opinion. Like, like you got to be so positive all the time that nothing that you see that is negative, you're supposed to comment on, deal with, have an opinion on, nothing. You're supposed to just let it all happen. You know what that is? That's apathy. That's not spiritual awareness. That's not clairvoyance. That's not spirituality. That's straight up apathy and indifference. And stop fronting and stop fronting like it's something other than that. Stop fronting like it's like, oh, well, if I say that, then I'm going to come off like a hater. Well, sometimes you got to be a hater. You know what? Sometimes you got to actually stand up and say, no, that shit is whack. I don't like that. I'm not feeling that. What else do you have that's better than that? What else? Sometimes you got to do that. But, see, most people don't feel like that because what a lot of these niggas do is try to intimidate you with knowledge, try to make you feel like you sm- that they, because they're so much smarter than you that you can't really ask none. The only stupid question is the one you don't ask. You know what I'm saying? And a wise man knows that he was once a fool, but a fool thinks that he was always a wise man. You see what I'm saying? There's two different things going on. There's people having a human experience, thinking they're spiritual, and spiritual beings having a human experience trying to get out of this motherfucker. And that's us. So like I said, the world ain't going to end on December 21st, 2012. We know that. But what is going to end is the devil's ability to fully control aspects of this reality the way that he or it has been doing. Because the only reason why I got away with doing it for so long is because of our indifference and apathy and amnesia. That's why. So when you point a finger at the devil, you got three fingers pointing right back at you. So, like I said, it's, it's a specific thing about understanding why it went like this. That's why we've been doing these classes like that. Just to reiterate. And this way, this way, so that way, when you in these classes, when you build them with these people, and they start, that, that too, but what I was saying was the re- another reason is so that way, when you're around these niggas, and you see them actually standing and giving you bold-faced lies about Morris history, you maybe could stand up and be like, that's, that's not true. Give me my money back. That ain't true. And I know it's not true because the Duke showed me the shit where I got it. He sent me the file. That's why they don't like me, because I'm the nigga that's not bound by nothing other than the creator and my love for my people, my family, you know what I'm saying, my planet, my universe. That's it. You ain't going to find no pictures of me with no fucking apron on and no Masonic Well, You ain't going to find that picture. How I got my Masonic degree, I was in the, in the, in the damn abandoned house with my grandmother going through paper, going through old stuff in the dumb waiter. And the spirit said, lift up this, this dirty-ass, dusty-ass tarp. I lifted that shit up. Why was, why was all of this man's feds, his, his feds from Mecca, he was a Shriner, his gold, solid gold plaque from Alpha Lodge, uh, number one, his, his, his blue books from the Blue Lodge, his, I'm talking about shit that's going all the way back to the 20s. You know what I'm saying? This nigga's who would literally kill to get that type of shit, who are paying $35,000, $75,000 a year to get shit that the creator just gave me. Two other queens I know hollered at me. They was old students of mine or whatever, and we was building, and they was talking about how they went to this to some white woman crib, and this woman had these fences, and they just went in on this chick <laughs> to the point where they came out with the fences, all three of them. That's, that's masonry 
That's Moorish right masonry. That that's symbolic masonry. That means that you have reached a certain level yourself where you don't have to go inside nobody's cloud to get it because the creator just giving you the shit. That's how you know the shit ain't what they say it is. As pristine and as reverent as them Prince Hall niggas be with their rituals, it still don't excuse the fact that one of the rituals is they make these black men dress up like men, like women, with lipstick and fake breasts and fake hair and dresses and shit and walk and parade these niggas up and down Harlem. And, and so then when I step to the devil, I say, yo, devil, why are you, why are you, why are you dressing, why are you dehumanizing your brothers? Oh, well, we need to make them know what it's like to be a woman and be a woman that's disrespected. I said, oh, so you want to turn this man into a woman? For what? To have sex with him? <laughs> that's what that says to me. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Why would a man, why would you want to reduce this man from a male who's black just like you to a female so that way you can feel superior to him so you could be the male and he could be the female? So what, in the ritual, he take it in the butt? That's what the skull and bones do. But that ain't the real ritual. All of that is the window dressing, because guess what? One of the biggest secrets in the Theosophic Society, in the Golden Dawn Society, at night. You see that? It raises at night. One of the biggest secrets in the Golden Dawn, one of the biggest secrets in the, in the um, what you call it, the other one I just said, is the fact that none of them dudes really have the most so-called royal secret. Is that some of the biggest secrets is the fact that they don't even know how they even got their knowledge. Because they have been here hiding your history so long, you give these niggas the benefit of the doubt. You think that they still know and remember how and where everything is hidden and how they bust your shit down. Don't believe that. This white man is just as lost, if not more lost than you. The only difference is he got a race to hold on to. But now that this nigga is president for another four years, these niggas are talking about seceding. I just did a lecture. I just did a lecture last month called Currency War, the second coming of the civil servant war, or what's called the second civil American civil war. I just told niggas that. Right? Putting that shit on Facebook for months. Right? <laughs> so it's like now that the white man's saying it, it's like, oh, good, all these people want to succeed from the union. This, they've been doing this. They've been talking about that. You have states. You, you have to understand, these niggas have been trying to secede from the union since they set it up because the shit is illegal because the whole union was based upon the destruction of the Moors, the autonomous Moors that was here, as well as their... Denison and indigenous brothers who was brought over here and was trying to fight for their own freedom. Like you got people missing the obvious. Did you know that at that conference in 1928 in Havana, Cuba, the, con the, the great convention of the Americas, all everybody from North Central South America, from Alaska, from Alaska, all the way to Peru, Amaru, do you know, and the Caribbean Islands, the Jordan Caribbean Islands, do you know that at that same conference, Noble Ali and CM Bay, who was a polyglot, he was his translator, which means that nobody could speak no language around Noble Ali without CM Bay being able to peep game and say what it was, because he was a polyglot, which means he spoke over 90 languages. Can you even name 90 languages? <laughs> you understand? And he was a Rosicrucian. Why? Because the order of the Rosy Cross was based off of the order of the Sufic order of the Rose that was founded by the model group Moors and was brought into Europa by Sir Francis Bacon, a.k.a. Shakespeare, a.k.a. the son of Queen Elizabeth and the jet black Duke of Lancaster. Now what? And this is what I mean, man. These niggas don't have no acumen in history. Can no white man from Europe, America, Australia... Can no black man from any one of these countries tell me shit about my own culture? And that's how you got to be. You almost got to be belligerent with your shit. You got to be so on your own shit that it seems like you're just hating on everybody else's shit because you don't mention nobody else. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Every day I wake up, I open my eyes, I see my queen, who is a Cordoba, which means that I'm reminded of the Moors. I see my son, I'm reminded of the Moors. I look at my altar, I'm reminded of the Moors. I look at my, my bees, everything. 
is related to that in my life. You understand what I'm saying? Everything. Because that's my culture. I'm not trying to be something I'm not. Nobody can prove that, I, that I'm not what I am. Do you understand that most of the shit that Noble Johnny and CMB did back then, they did with no paperwork? No paperwork? That, no, that, that CMB only filed shit in the Library of Congress and was able to do all this to the point where in 1928 when they received the mandate for North Central South America, do you realize what that did to Noble Jolly? That turned him into an emperor. He became emperor of the Americas, people. You don't give somebody jurisdiction over an entire hemisphere and not look at them as an emperor. I'm sorry. What do you think Selassie was doing? This is why he was head of the American side of the organization. At the very top of your adversary, once you get past the Club of Rome and the Trilaterals and the Bilderbergs, all the bullshit that everybody else talk about, you get to the high shit. You get to the ancient order of Memphis and Mizraim or the order of Trapezoid. Once you go there, right, you either then got to be consecrated as a satanic priest or you better get consecrated as a uh, Catholic priest. Then after all of that, you then go up. If you're lucky, you become a, a devotee to one of the seven. Excuse me, one of the nine. And then the nine served the nine served the seven. And then the seven served the the uh, uh, fallen angels. And then above them is Lucifer. So, again, I know Lucifer represents the pineal gland activated and the morning star, and it's really this, and it's really about pineal activate, all that. But guess what? Most niggas don't know that shit. So when you talk about Lucifer, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> These niggas are going to think you you a devil worshiper. Because guess what? A lot of Moors are. A lot of occultists are. A lot of Kemites are. And don't even know that they're doing that. Caught up. As they say, caught the fuck up, as, as man Bernie Mac would say back in the day. Caught up, because they don't even know. Because they found them behind rituals that were set up to throw you off. You done read the same books I read. How is it that if I can read that Baphomet was really a code for Mohammed, that nowadays niggas still think Baphomet is a code for the devil? If you look at the fourth clear plan square of Washington, the way Ben Bay, Benjamin Banneker Bay, blessed it dead, aired it out. On one side by the Capitol and the State Building, all that, you got the compass and the square. That represents the denizen moors that came over here on boats. But compass and squares, when you do navigation, is guided by what? The star that is over the what? The Pentagon, right? The five-pointed star specifically. So that really is the seat for where you need to start setting up your government again. If not there, maybe Philly, going back to the beginning. But either way, this will explain why they bust the temple. This will explain why they attacked the Pentagon right after they attacked. Well, actually, they hit the Pentagon first with a missile. So, again, man, if it's about getting money, then be real that that's what you want to do and that's all you want to do. And do your UCC filing, get your UCC one, do your little thing, do your liens and all of that, right, if that's what you want to do. But don't dress it up like it's somehow connected to your nationality. Well, your nationality has nothing to do with that because, again, the UCC and all that shit was created in what, 1956? What happened in 1956? That was the year that Eisenhower relinquished the dominion of the old Moorish dominions and left it open until 1960 for any more to really get their shit together to go back into their constitutional fold. But just to make it that much more interesting for you niggas, we're going to create something called civil rights because part of the political status A1 says that once the consular, once the consularies change status, that those consuls could be perceived as criminals in the new government. Why do you think Martin Luther King, another Rosicrucian, another Jesuit, was the one that was trying to push you back into nonviolence? But it wasn't until he started building with Elijah Muhammad that he found out the true scope of what was going on and tried to repent. That last speech, when he was giving it and he was talking to all the dudes, look around him. Look at the people that was around him at the podium. You had all these niggas wearing little white fezzes. 
little white hats that look like fezzes, that look like royal art degree fezzes. Because that's what he was trying to do. But again, nigga, you only sold us out. So it's a, it's a wrap for you. You got to understand, man, all of that space pro, all that shit was over here and was guarded by us from time immemorial. But they want you to believe that when they talk about Africa, that it's only that continent of Africa that you have any power in. When them Africans don't give a damn about you, sorry, Africans, but they don't. Africans be quick to tell you, you're not African. You're right, I'm not. But now I understand why the African delegation of shit wasn't invited to the original agreement at Wilhelm's badge in 1782. I'm not going to give you the date. I want you to go and research it yourself. But if you want to find more about it, come to class and I'll show you. We are building up. We, this is all building towards something. So those people that's not coming through, in a minute, we're going to shut all of them classes and all that shit down too. Because everything is going to switch. And, man, enough people with this game that I already know I could trust. So people want some real shit, man. I'm not playing, man. It, it is real. And your adversary, the enemy, remember what Noble Joe Ali said. He said they are the secret protectors of this law. Why else would you allow them to wear the feds with the upper part and put the sword above it and all that? Why else would we allow them to become Shriners? So when they put in, they fit, they put in the ass of all them, all them pseudo, pseudo Sunni Arabs and all these other niggas over there that's trying to act like that they're not racist. When you go over there, they treat you like slaves. And when you go over there, you see them treating the Filipinos and the dark-skinned Malaysian people like straight-up slaves over there. These Saudi Arabians and all these niggas. These niggas talking about, oh, these black niggas over here talking about, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and cake up and all of that. Oh, yeah? You wait till that color revolution get over there. You wait till the Saudi Arabian people realize that they, that they Muslim government is actually a Jewish government. And they find out them niggas is really Hebrews. You you see what happened. Ask yourself this. If 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 Israel is so so uh scared of Iran, why are they gonna bomb Sudan? Why are they gonna bomb Sudan if they're against Iran? They pull in a bait and switch on you, man. Fake right, go left. <laughs> you know what I mean? They pull in a they pull in a, a what they call a three card monty on you, man. They're getting you caught up in the wrong nationality. What I will say this, and we're going to expound on this more in the class. You know me. I'm not a, I'm not a heavy uh, proponent of the person that they're calling the president right now, right? You, you already know that. Everybody already know. I don't dislike the niggas. I don't know him. But based upon his position, and, you know, he's suspect, <laughs> basically. But, again, I hope your credit with credit is due. This is the only nigga in the United States history to sign the Sovereignty Act. You hear what I'm saying, guys? You ain't never hear any of these moors talk to you about this, right? No, because they're not going to talk to you about it, because they want you to keep you a slave. That's right. This nigga signed a document that every other president since Jackson, since Andrew Jackson, has been denied to sign. This nigga signed it. And this document says that the United States has to recognize sovereign nations, regardless to where they are on the planet, people. So isn't it funny that once this nigga does it, that all these niggas in your community is now starting to talk to you about other shit? You don't see what's going on, people? These white boys are trying to get it popping because they know their history is over. Last day of history, December 21st, sorry, that's the last day of white supremacy, Period. Period, as if it ever existed, but for some niggas it do. So that's the end of it, you understand? So all these niggas that's now talking to you about all this other shit or whatever, now they, they, don't want you, they want you to love the white man or all of that. And I'm not saying it's usually, I'm not, I'm not telling people what to do. I'm just saying what's happening. You love who you love. You get with who you want to get with. But when the great get up morning comes, don't try to act like somebody forced you into league with these people. Don't try to act like somebody put a bullet in your back to tell you, hey, you better fuck with him or else. No, you chose to be with that white man. You chose to be with that white girl. You got Africans. I know Africans right now that's married to white women. They got three or four wives in Africa. They white women don't even know. <laughs> she think, they white women think, this is their only husband. You don't even know the African hustle. 
These niggas get married at 13, nigga, have babies and shit, have five or six wives come over here to make money for them, hook up with a nice little white woman, give her a nice little mulatto baby or whatever she thinks she rocking. They working together. He got his green card now. He can bring his whole family over here. But he don't tell you that they his family. He don't tell you that they his wives and shit, though. Well, he tell you that they his sisters. <laughs> <laughs> they tell you he's his sisters, and these are my nephews. And really, this is their daddy. <laughs> you don't know because you don't speak Warlock. <laughs> you don't speak Key Swahili. You don't speak Keys. You don't speak none of that shit. So he's talking to his, he's talking to his wife, telling how much he loves you right in your face, white woman. You don't even know. That's because these Africans been then had to hustle on you. But because they self-hatred, they hate themselves a lot, they isolate it. So, again, let them lump you up in a trick bag with them Africans if you want, man. Because, again, like I said, when I come over here, why why do I need to be African? Well, all I got to do is go to Haiti, and it's like I'm an African. Everybody in Haiti, mad dark skin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Same thing with Dominican Republic. Everybody in Dominican Republic that's real Dominican is light skin, even though they don't want to admit it no more. Same thing in Puerto Rico. <laughs> Same thing in all these Morisco countries that was founded after the expulsion of Granada and all of that. So, in retrospect, let's recap. The Sovereignty Act has already been signed. So the, the path to your own nation and your own government, all that, is already there. And this nigga signed it. So regardless of what he did, he don't have to do nothing now. And to remember, I was talking about, oh, he, it would be great if he signed some referendum against police brutality, all that. You don't even need to do that now, nigga. You did the one thing you can do. So, again, uh, you got to give the nigga credit for something. So I'm giving him my endorsement in that. That was dope, homie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was dope. Keep shit like that up. Um, that's number one. Number two, you got these individual petitions from individual citizens, and then you also have uh, petitions from actual states now that are jumping on the bandwagon because they want to break out because they know what's coming down the pike, son. They know. And you believe it or not, there are a lot of Caucasian people a lot of black people, a lot of Asian people who remember what our forefathers did for them, who remember who really founded the country, who remember who you really are and want to help. And some of them niggas, believe it or not, it's fucking KKK niggas. <laughs> believe it or not. Now, I ain't telling you to go hook up with no KKK niggas, and I ain't telling you to love the white man and all that. What I'm saying is, the white man's still the devil to me, or if he ain't, he'll do to the real one get here. However, I know that that white devil was created by a black one. And based on that, white supremacy now is anybody that's trying to perpetuate this bullshit. So it don't matter what color you are, really, as if it ever really was. But according to CNB, there's only been two empires on the planet from the beginning to now. So as much as you want to lump Kemet into one thing as as if it was its own thing and Samaria as if it was its own thing and, and Granada as if it was its own thing, when really all of these individual cultures were founded by the original people in their antecedents and were all connected because they were the same people. And all of them had tutelage over here in places like Tahua Takan. How you got Tahuti over there, and you got the pyramid and complex of Tahuti over here with the emerald tablets, but then I'm always supposed to think about Africa? There was a scene in this movie, 3,000 Miles to Graceland, where Kevin Costner, who's playing the outlaw, who's Elvis's real son, is waiting for uh, somebody else. He's waiting, his ant- he's waiting in this antique store. So then the the chick who's coming in to launder the money with him, she walks into the antique and she's walking around. So he's counting the money, and she looks at this straight-up Tuthead, King Tuthead. And she looks at it, and he was like, she was like, wow, this is nice. And he looked at it, he was like, yeah, that's one of my favorite pieces. So then she, he said, she said, it's one of my favorite pieces. He said, it's African, right? The white girl said, oh, I thought it was Egyptian. You see? You see? You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? These niggas, when they created the Middle East, they made niggas, they did that to take Africa, take Kemet out of Africa. <laughs> and it worked. Because when I was coming up, that place was called the Persian Gulf. 
Now it's just called the Gulf. Right? So, again, recapping, this is a season of states. You're going to see even more shit pop off now. You're going to see even more states start popping up at the bandwagon. Because, like I said, for those people who came to the lecture, currency wars, the second coming of the second civil servant uh, war, you will see that I built on the fact that all of this is based upon the United States being isolated in the world because it can't pay for anything with gold and silver. Because the gold and silver that's connected to the United States is really only under the mandate of the original government, which means that they can't touch that gold until we tell them that they can do it. You understand? And Rothschild and them, Evelyn and these niggas, is basically at a, at a disadvantage because everybody's turning against them. So they can only deal with countries now that were under the original jurisdiction. No. My Tiffany's name is Tyner. Mm-hmm. She's McCoy, Tyner's niece. Um, he was a great jazz musician. Anyway, yeah, her, her father was his brother. So in that, all of this basically has come to a head now to the point where, like I say, this is not only the end of race as we understand it, right? It is the end of the quote-unquote white race because they already put it out that by 2025 to 2050 there will be no complected Caucasian people left. And this is their punishment. Get the clock of destiny and see what CM Bay say about it. This is why they don't want you to talk about CM Bay because when you talk about CM Bay and Noble Jew, you talk about John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. They don't want you to have that double up. They don't want you to have that team up on you. Because that means whenever you, you throw in a jab, that's noble Jew. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we're also going to get into how the movement was split up and what these brothers was doing to preserve it. And the fact that all of them was really working together to get us to this point. And everybody that's working together now is trying to throw you off of that point. Don't believe me? Look at the fruits that they have produced what has happened? How has the movement enhanced and raised the vibration of the planet like it was doing prior to 2008 since all of this bullshit has started? Like I said, G, they don't want me on no hidden colors. They don't want me on that because that's a sanction thing. And, again, I'll run through that shit. That whole shit would be me because most of the shit that the niggas they talking about, they're not even dealing with more Booker T. Coleman. But as great as Umar Johnson is, you know, he's a great brother. But he's not schooled more with science the way I am. He ain't. Sorry, he ain't. Took if we took an exam right now on real moral science, these niggas would fail. Would get a D and, you would... and again, I can be confident and say this because I know that every day, every day I'm studying some new aspects of this shit. These niggas can't tell me nothing. And I like it. Yeah, and I like it. Even if I wasn't on the radio. This is what I was doing prior to being on the radio. Niggas who already know. I have people who I started this knowledge with together. My baby moms, my daughter's baby moms was the one who put me on the moral science. You understand? When I really started getting in, this chick started perming out and getting back into the to the fiction. But I should have known that being a her father was army intelligence, there was some type of fiction with this chick. I should have known. You know what I'm saying? But again, this is where elders come in. This is where the, 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 the people that were supposed to be around me were supposed to help guide me into a space that I was supposed to see what was really hood and going on. But when I was going to the elders in the morning trying to get knowledge and, and advice on how to do it, first thing these niggas want to ask, a word? When, would you like that, young blood? Okay, so where you going to be sleeping? Who's sleeping with who? This is what these niggas, and I'm talking about grand sheiks, man. So again, G. Oh, yeah. What, what, what are they scared I'm going to say what I ain't already said? But what, what, what am I really going to say? I mean, there's a lot, actually. There's a lot of shit that I don't talk about on the radio that I can only talk about in class. That's why I be urging people to come through to get the real. So that way when you're listening to these people's show and you hear all the bullshit they're putting out there, you can call in and be like, yo, that shit is bullshit, man. Y'all niggas is lying. What are you talking about? They said that all of the temples were sh- I'll send you the documents. Send me funds. Donate something to the to the cause, and I'll send you the document that you can read it for yourself. That you can read it for yourself. 
And when was this report taken? September 11th, 1931, nigga. So, again, this Trump everybody. This Trump everybody. Even the oldest grand sheep was a damn baby then. So these niggas, again, they can't tell you nothing. There's nothing these niggas can tell you about nothing with this shit anymore. Nobody you already said in the new time, which, again, is starting now, the new moors would stand, and they would tell the old moors to sit in the back, and they would lead us into a new age, into a new uplifting fall of humanity. Who the fuck do you think that is? It ain't any of these niggas that's out now. It's none of them. And, again, I'm not dissing nobody because I'm not speaking about nobody in particular. I'm talking about everybody in general. The same way they, they don't talk about me or black against me or whatever is the same way I'm going to talk about it because I don't have nothing to hide, man. Everybody that was cool with me coming up back in the days that I could look at that was, quote, unquote, friends with me, none of them niggas talk to me no more. You know why? Because all them niggas in the fiction. All them niggas, the niggas I was in the rap group with, the niggas I was kicking all the knowledge and shit, all them niggas is in it, or worse. One of them niggas, the nigga attacked me at the funeral, was straight homo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Straight homo. Now, don't think niggas know. But this is the game. This is this is where it is now, brothers and sisters. So, again, you want the real? You know where to get it, man. I'm I'm not a pushy salesman. I don't want to keep digging up and all of that, but I know what I'm good at, and I know what I contribute to this thing, and I know what my queen and my son inspire me to do every day. With only $20 in my pocket, going online and having to fix other people's shit, with, who they gave me, broke these niggas off, broke these niggas off thousands of dollars. Because I got a book out there. But my book cost $1,600, cop, $6,000. One thousand. Six hundred and twenty-six dollars to print one hundred copies. Exactly. So we sold one hundred copies, but I have not profited but two hundred dollars because I have to put all that money back into the book fund. Because we don't one thousand six hundred and twenty-six dollars for one hundred copies. Because we don't have patronage. I don't have no lodge behind me. I don't have police here paying my salary so I could do new DVDs and buy new. Uh, HD cameras and all that shit. I don't have none of that shit. What I got is what you see. Me, this queen, this baby, and y'all. That's it. So, again, man, support the team. Please holler at us. If anybody's interested in the class coming up this Wednesday from 9 to 11, please holler at me at houseofl at hotmail.com. Uh, we'll send you the fly and all of that. Please spread the word. You know what I'm saying? That it's real. And um, also, please check out www.darkscope418.com. Get the book because everything they talk about now with the seceding and the secession and all of that and the seceding from the union, I wrote it in the book, man. For those people that want to see the the, the lecture that we did, Currency Wars, uh, the second coming of the uh, Civil War, holler at me, houseofellahotmail.com. Also check out some of our older works, Morris Compendium. Um, You can go to www. Uh, com, and we have a lot of the products on there as well as a lot of the um, Morris Compendium study reference books and all of that. Also check out www.blackmamaworkouts.com www.cookingmorewithless.com Support the queen, man. Because I'm seeing mad shorties out here now all trying to like like the queen did a song. We did a song. We used Premiere in the song. Do one beat for a song. I turn around now. It's like niggas doing whole. Somebody wrote me. They say, yo, you inspired man shit. Niggas is doing whole shit for premiere right now. I'm like, wow. It's like, damn. I ain't even dropped the song yet. But this is what I mean. Niggas try to, niggas try to roll a block you before you do your thing. So the thing is, because a lot of conscious people let this type of shit slide, I don't, man. I don't. Because I see and I peep game and I work too damn hard does not see nothing from this shit, man. So let's all get there together. Remember, this is leading to something. And as much as I love Super Heavy Radio and all of that, this is leading to a point where I, I ain't going to be able to do this, do it like this no more. So again, man, support support the people while they're here. Support the true and living ancestors when they're here. And I'm not just talking about me and Selena and the more. I'm talking about the people in your family, you, uh, 
Like I said, some of the people I named earlier, these are people that's here doing the work. Also, respect to those brothers uh, who I've been building with on the, uh, I don't want to say on the low, but behind the scenes who have been able to send me certain things that verify findings that I already knew, but is now taking it to another level so that way when I present it to you, you already so improve yourself. Remember, real moral science and history deals with the love and the understanding of God. And these niggas don't believe it. So if these niggas is not talking about this is a divine national movement, remember, all real temples got shut down after 1930. That means that all these temples since then have been operating under fictitious jurisdiction as 501c3s, as Masonic lodges, as churches, and everything else. Then when niggas caught on to it, they want to flip this whole Herb Smith shit, right? Herb Smith revised statutes and all this bull. It's bullshit, man. It's all bullshit because Noble John Lee and CM Bay did all of this thing with, with really three, three paperworks. The ID... <laughs> the Morris Quran and the Clock of Destiny. That's, they did everything that we're dealing with with these three things. But why is it that none of these niggas are talking to you about the three things? Well, you got one nigga that is. That's your man, I see the Duke of Tears, on behalf of Team Cordova, Selena, the Empress of 10,000 Years, a more Prince, a more Black Hawk, the Prince of Tears, uh, Sag Basad, all of you, love and light. Thank you for the uh, support. If you want to donate, hit me up at, uh, you can go to PayPal and Put it through there anonymously if you want. Duke of Tears at Gmail dot com. For those people that want to come to the class, let me know. House of L at Hotmail dot com. All right? Peace.